Welcome to Fortune Prime Global, a rapidly growing and award-winning broker. FPG has been operating for over 10 years with multi-regulation. Connects its clients with first-tier trading liquidity providers, thus offering extremely low spreads. To everyone, thank you for coming. Uh, I really appreciate your your time. And um, here we are here we are again with Adam Harris. So probably some of you have attended the previous webinar, and now he's gonna give a quick review for the general 2024. So the best scenario that you could trade. So here you go, Adam. Please carry on. Thank you. Great. So let's have a look at this. So I want to keep an eye on on uh, on time. On the time, so we got like, let's call it 37 minutes so we can wrap up in case there's any questions and we want to uh, want to see how it's going. So the topic for this evening is really about the best chance to trade in March. Um, and uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm gonna give you a bit of background behind myself in a moment anyway, uh, but I'm both a day trader, a swing trader. I manage, um, I manage some high net worth individual funds. I'm, uh, uh, and also manage a stocks portfolio. So I'll show you um, for example, some of the performance. February was a decent month. I felt the markets were dormant. I felt that they were in a bit comatose, but the returns weren't bad. I'll show you that in a moment. I'll show you from a live account. Uh, and, but I'm really excited because there's some, I didn't plan it this way. There are just a lot of opportunities right now that are happening across the board. Uh, and, you know, for those of you who are trading with trends, you're going to, it should, it looks amazing to me, a lot of those things. So, who am I? Well, obviously, I'm an independent trader. Uh, I've been trading since I started getting into the game in about 2007, but I probably took my first trading course in 2009, um, which started me on my journey. And uh, now my title officially would be Chief Market Analyst, which is where I provide market analysis and market opinions to respected institutions, exchanges and brokers around the world, brokerages around the world. Uh, and then, of course, that's one thing that I do. That's like that's like my job. That's kind of like a fixed income job. But actually, when I do the rest of the time, earn the majority of my income from trading. Um, I don't always get to trade day trade every week or every day. I do it as often as I can, but sometimes I just have too much on my plate, or there's just other things that interfere. So I love Thursday, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays for trading, day trading the most. But sometimes I have to go take somebody to a doctor's appointment or fix something in the garden or I have to do stuff like that. I think managing a stock portfolio is very important for everybody. Uh, obviously, I'm, I generally am targeting between two and 8% per month. I'm risking somewhere around half a percent per trade. So I might take quite a few trades. I'm not really concerned if I have a couple of losses because, because I'm risking so little per trade. Uh, it's not really, it keeps my mindset is, is very, very stable. Um, and obviously, uh, I, you know, I speak at a few events. So there we go. Let's uh, move on. So today we're going to talk about the best sort of opportunities for uh, trading in, in, in March. I want to talk a little bit about strategy. I want to go through the different asset classes. So the different asset classes are uh, Forex, currencies, uh, commodities, and indices. And then obviously you could have stocks. But for today, we'll focus on indices, commodities, as well as currencies. And then we'll talk a little bit about risk management. So what I'm going to do at this time, let me quickly kind of show you the stats and performances on one of the accounts. So for example, this, I did 12.2 in Feb. I had a really good month in January, but I should say that that actually came over from November and December. So November, December had open trades. And often what happens is your winning trades will run for longer than your losing trades because obviously your stop loss is going to be one R and your profit target might be three R. So what happens is your stop losses will tend to get hit first of your weaker trades for the most part and your winning trades will go on. So I actually had winning trades from November and December that ultimately only closed out in January. So November and December really only reflects the weakest of the trades that I took in November and December closing out first and the winning trades in of, of November, December closing out in January. I think this is an exceptionally high amount. I would, I think that if I, if you, anything above 6% is amazing, amazing. If you can do that. Um, I actually think, believe it or not, 3% a month is also incredible, but anything above 6% is amazing. So anything over and above that, you can't really rely on it or expect it, but it works. That's very good. And we're up 0.2% for March. I think the last two weeks of February and March didn't do much. Not very impressed at all. Not impressed at all. So that being said, let's kind of go and have a look at the market. So there's a lot, um, 
a lot of really amazing opportunities at the moment. Just absolutely incredible uh, in terms of what they are. So the very first one I'm going to talk about, just because it's it's very close to breaking out imminently here, is going to be Pound CAD. So Pound CAD has got a beautiful, very very bullish strong level of resistance and a very bullish structure that is forming that my expectation was that it would break out in this area. Um, it looks like it's going to try and break out this week. So that's very interesting. Also, we need to talk about what's happening this week. We've got non-farm payroll on Friday. We've got CPI data coming out of the UK. We've got lots of CPI data, Europe and the UK this week. But we've got non-farm payroll jobs numbers coming out on Friday. So very quickly, the US economy is rock solid. It's so solid. And the only thing that they're going to have to sort out one day is going to have to be the uh, deficit, which is which the only way that you can um, reduce the deficits is to do what they're kind of doing now. So even though a lot of people are complaining about it, the only the best way to solve and reduce the debt is to do what they are doing now, which is so all the money they're spending on the infrastructure in the US, which adds to the debt will create jobs and create GDP, which will then pay off the debt. So you're seeing the first part of it now, which is the spending, and then you need to see it being uh, paid off. The US is doing really well. If you want to get a truly masterful understanding of how economics works and why the US is in such great shape under the current administration, you need to read Ray Dalio's, Ray Dalio's books, not this one, not principles, but Ray Dalio's stuff. You need to read that. Uh, there we go. You need to read his stuff. One's called The Changing World Order, The New World Order. It'll give you an astounding, masterful understanding of how economics actually is supposed to work. And what blows my mind is, I mean, I provide analysis for big, large numbers of people around the world. And also, for example, investing.com have approached me to be a major contributor there. And I'm amazed at the number of people I see on Bloomberg and everything who don't really understand economics as much as they think they do. And they, are, and they have a massive platform. So I want to make it clear that 50% at least of the people I hear speaking who you would think know what they're talking about don't really know what they're talking about. So, okay, so that being said, that looks good. I want to see what happens with the UK and EU econ economies. And then also let's have a look at this really nice potential trade. So how would I trade this? Um, first of all, every trade I take, ladies and gentlemen, I'm almost always looking for a three to one target. But I think in this particular case, at a minimum, by the way, but in this case, I think I'd be foolish not to, I think I'd be foolish not to realize that there is a level here. So I want to take care of that. There's a couple of different ways I could trade it. I could, for example, could, for example, take an entry above the high here. So I don't want to enter now because we could still bob around. And the most, the tightest I could put my stop loss would be behind the candle that breaks out. So whichever candle ultimately closes out, it mustn't have a wick like this. It must actually close. I want it to be something like this one it closes out on the upside. So whichever one that is, when it closes, take a buy position, stop loss below the low and take profits, partial profits ahead of this. Um, alternatively, look for a better entry on the lower time frame, which is going to look something like this. I'm wiping out the, sorry, let me get the annotations here. And I'm glad we're doing this today because there's so much stuff today. This is incredible. So let's go on to the daily. So my expectation is that this is going to climb. So let's go on to the daily. What am I looking for? This looks really good. So that means that I could take my uh, entrance or when it breaks out and stop loss below the low here is perfectly acceptable. That's acceptable. This is also acceptable. This is also acceptable, but it's just getting ridiculous now because the further away your stop loss is, the worst it is. So I think for me, the best is going to be somewhere around here, which means that becomes, you know, so that becomes my risk, 1R, something like that. That becomes 1R, something along those lines. Um, but the next best thing would be looking for the breakouts. The breakout looks really good. Let me change, let me add in a MACD indicator. So we'll just bring in the MACD, which is my oscillator, which is this one here, which looks good. And the MACD is looking particularly good in this in this case here. Okay, so what I'm looking for here, what I want to see, I want to see the MACD break above this. I want to see the MACD break above this line when it breaks through here. So if that happens, we're good. That 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 is a confirmation of bullishness. Um, and I think it's going to anyway. I'm not I'm not too worried about it. I think it's going to be really good. That means it shouldn't be a failed breakout. Okay, the next step is going on to say the four hour. The best one's probably the one hour. So having a look at the one hour, so this is what I would really like to do. I'd like to see in the one hour, I actually want to see price come back and retest this and go, or the four hour. The four hour would be incredible. I'd be looking for price to do that. So that for me, 
could provide an entry whereby you get an entry here with your stop loss here, and then you get 10 to one out of the same trade. Um, that's possibly an idea. So there's some risk in that one because price could come back down and then go up. So you could get stopped out. But if you get it right, you'll get a 10 to one out of the same trade. So there's two different ways that you could go about doing that. So that is pound cat. Let's move on and do the next one. Let's look at euro dollar. Okay, so we're gonna look at these from a daily perspective. And I'm gonna just change my template here. We had a downtrend over here. We've broken through that. The trend, the trend line itself is not important. What it is, is it's an angle of momentum. When you have a downtrend, you head lower. So you have a bearish angle going down. When you're in a sideways market, you look like this. And when you're in a bull market, your angle goes up. In this case, we were going down. We've broken through that, which means that that downward momentum is gone. And actually, in addition to that, we also have gone from lower highs and lower lows We've broken this one and we've actually come back up. We've produced the bullish candle and we're on our way up to break and confirm that we're going into an uptrend. We're just below the 50 period moving average. So it is premature to say we haven't got there yet because once you break above that high, you're in a confirmed uptrend. However, it looks very good. The momentum looks really good. And therefore, I think there's a very fair possibility with the exception of what NFP will do to this. That, but if we can close above this 50 period moving average, we should be safe. So I like that. So how can I trade that? There's different ways of trading it. The first thing you have to do when you're trading is determine the direction. Which way do I think the market's gonna go? Once you've determined that, that's half the work done. The next thing is where do I get my entry? Where do I put my stop loss? So if I think it's gonna go up, I can enter now. This is not the perfect, it's not a precision entry, but it's not terrible. Stop loss here. Because that's a swing low, that would be the best place to put it. Arguably, I could put my stop loss here. I don't think it's 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 legal or it's acceptable. It is, but it's not the best one. This is probably the best spot. Um, I could wait until price breaks above the 50, comes back, test it, and then I could get an entry there with my stop loss below that. So there's a couple of different entries and ways in which I could do that. And again, in that particular case, I would keep an eye on these levels. I would target these types of levels here. Just want to change the color here. So this looks a bit more... Okay, so could target that. That looks good. Let's look at Sterling. Sterling also looking bullish. You've got to, you've got to admit, very, very nice series of high lows, high highs, just about a break through this. Yes, massive level of resistance in this area. But it's what we're seeing here with both the euro and the pound climbing is dollar weakness, and therefore uh, we're likely to see that breakthrough. But the probability is looking very good. We've got Aussie dollar now that has done the same thing. People don't realize what we've got here. We've got an inverse head and shoulders. We've got left shoulder, head, right shoulder. We're about to break through that. We're on our way. Um, and we are because it's the dollar that's really doing the work for us. <clears throat> but it's not just that. We've broken through this downward sloping trend line. We've done exactly the same thing here. And we've produced our higher low here. So the confirmation of this would be when we break above that high. What is going on here? I changed the color, didn't I? Didn't I change the colors? Oh, because it wasn't for this one, sorry. Okay, so then we break through that, we'll be fine. But you can see there's a, there's a level, there's a battle in this area here with these, with these things. I've also got a nice little tool here called Clean Up Objects, which is a script you can download and put into your scripts folder. And if you just do that, it just removes all the clutter from your chart. It's a very good one. So good Kiwi Dollar. So all these look really good, guys. Um, the Kiwi was looking much stronger. It took a bit of a hit. Took a bit of a hit here. Looks like it's trying to hold. And if it does recover, it could look very good. Um, in other words, it could work its way up here. So I'd keep an eye on that. Of the ones I've shown you now, it's the weakest one. But dollar yen. Okay, so dollar yen. The problem is Bank of Japan really doesn't want price to go past this level. So keep an eye on whatever policy changes they're making, all kinds of different stuff. They really don't want it to go beyond that. So and their primary trading partner, export partner, is the US. So they don't really care about euro yen, pound yen. They don't care. They care about the yen in general. But the one they care that is number one at the top of the list is dollar yen. So if dollar yen is good, they don't care what anything else is doing. Which is why dollar yen is the thing you have to watch with regards to 
Are they complaining about it? Are they edgy about it? Are they going to make policy changes? What's going to happen? The reason I bring this up is that all the yen pairs look absolutely incredible. I'm going to, I'm going to adjust my uh, list here. So we've got Euro yen looks beautiful. It's just had a pullback. Usman, you will recognize this setup over here. This is a bullish inside candle. We've got the 50, 20, and 10 in a bullish formation. We've got price retesting a previous high. We've got a beautiful uptrend. This is a no-brainer. We do have a previous high over here we have to watch out for in this area, but that looks really good. Now, it's not an accident that all the yen crosses are near previous highs. They're all there because of the dollar yen being close to its level. So basically, all of them are kind of close to previous highs, but they look good. So the question is, should I take the trade or not? Are Bank of Japan going to do anything? Look, we can't really predict that. And in this case, there could be a lot of money sitting on the table that we take before they step in. So this is a personal individual risk management choice. I think for me, I'm willing to put a bit of money on some of the yen crosses, maybe not on every single one, but Euro yen, pound yen, uh, Kiwi yen, Aussie yen, potentially. They all look so good. Let me show you why. Pound yen looks so good. It's already on its way. So unfortunately, the entry for this would actually have been here today. But technically tomorrow, there might be a candle that comes down here and I could get an entry in roughly the same area, stop loss below the here or below the daily candle. But it's on its way. And so that looks good. So let's talk about the risk here. There is a real danger here that the Bank of Japan could, in, could intervene, but they might only intervene. They could intervene now or they could do it in a month's time. And in that time, we could see some moves going. So the risk is taking all the trades and they intervene or taking some of the trades and they intervene or taking none of the trades and they don't intervene. That's really kind of like your different situations. So what I've accepted is I'm gonna take some of the trades with less of a, 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 a trade account investment with the accepted reality that they might intervene and that's why I have my stop loss in place. And if that happens and I have losses on them, one and a half percent, I'll be okay. And I've accepted that. So that's, that's important because that process is, a, is an acknowledgement of what could happen and an acceptance of what the cost of that would be. So that looks good, beautiful, it's on its way. So what, can we day trade these? Yes, we can. If this is gonna continue the four hours looking amazing, I'm looking for a pullback here. Yes, it means I have to watch out for this area, but in principle, we should continue to keep going up. And what am I looking at here? The one hour is looking to do a bit of a retracement. It'll probably come back into this area. There's a very real possibility that there will be a continuation up here possibly making sure that I make sure that I take some profits before we get up to this level while it battles and decides what it's going to do. So that means that this week, all the yen pairs have some potential money on the table, but I also have to be cognizant of what those levels are and I make sure I take some profits, partial profits. And also if it keeps going, I want to make sure that I keep re-entering. Does that make sense? So that looks really good. So let's go back up to the daily. Let's clear this chart. Let's go look at Aussie yen. Aussie yen, not looking terrible but not looking as good as pound yen pound yen actually looks the best so far it's got a really nice just the quality of that trend is really good this is an example of a failed breakout this one over here is that failed breakout so where i was talking about pound cad has got a setup this has actually had a very similar setup and everything was looking good here as well and it was it failed but in the long run it's carried on up which means that actually there was money to be made in other ways okay kiwi yen so this is an interesting one. If all the yen pairs are going to go, if they are all going to go, and nothing else happens with the Bank of New Zealand, Royal Bank of New Zealand, then there is a fair argument to be made that Kiwi yen will catch up and keep going. And at least this one has lots of room. It's actually broken through resistance here. Look at this beautiful breakout that did work. So the Aussie yen one didn't work, and this one did. Like, amazing. So now we pull back. Entry above the high of today's candle Stop loss below the low here. Targeting trail your stop or target three to one. Banger. So that's a real trade I'm taking. Obviously, they all are. But that's what I mean is I took action on that one today already. CAD yen, similar type of setup here. Break and a retest. Bullish inside candle. Moving averages all in the correct formation. Looks fine. Should be okay. Swissy yen. Swissy yen has a problem. Swissy Yen has this problem. It has a much, much stronger level of resistance. Therefore, I would not touch Swissy Yen because of this extended longer region of resistance here. I would wait for a breakout or a breakout and a retest. 
So Swissy Yen, because I'm not in it at the moment, I would stay away from it. Okay, let's move through the rest. How are we doing for time? We're doing good. We have about 17 minutes left. Uh, so we're about halfway through. Let's move through these. Euro Aussie. Euro Aussie, beautiful guys. Beautiful break and a retest and a bullish candle. This is a setup right here already. In other words, it's a go. So I can get in now. Stop loss below the low here. Yes, I would take some partial profits before that and I would target this one. Looks good. Your Aussie looks good. Your CAD. Your CAD looks good as well. It's breaking through this area now. It's a breakout. It's just pulled back. This was a pullback and a retracement. These are probably going to reorder into a bullish formation. That's on its way. Entry stop loss below the low. There's a potential area up there. We've got a bit of noise here. We should be able to get through it. It's just interesting to me. A lot of markets are moving. Euro Swissy. So Euro Swissy has gone into an uptrend. It's just had a consolidation in this area. And it's taken off. So now it's overextended. So in this particular case, it is bullish, but it's gone. The move has happened. You have to wait for a pullback. So nothing on uh, nothing on Euro Swissy, Euro GBP. Garbage. Just garbage. Okay, it's just garbage. So nothing there. Euro Kiwi. Euro Kiwi double bottomed. This is a very strong signal. Bullish divergence. Bullish divergence on its way. So it'll break through, it'll break above this. So what it'll do is it will break up, retest this and go, or pull down, go and break through. But I think it's going to do this and target that. And maybe that one, but definitely take some profit here. So that's also a little bit of a no-brainer, but it's not the best entry because it's already had a bit of a move, but it is going to break through. No problem there. Pound Aussie. Oh, great. This is also very close to a bit of a breakout here. So we might get something on GBP. It seems to me that these are going to go. This is a double bottom again in, a, in an uptrend. Very, very nice. We've got bullish, we've got bullish uh, momentum. We've just had a pullback and a bullish candle. There is a little bit of resistance here. I acknowledge that in this area but I think that's going to break higher as well. So that looks good. Pound CAD, you've seen that's uh, Pound CAD. Pound CAD we've spoken about, that's that, and Pound Swissy. Pound Swissy has already had its breakouts, already had its breakouts, it's already on its way, um, and it's in a bit of an area. So I would maybe stay away from it, but it's looking good, looking nice and bullish. So all the GBP pairs looking very, very bullish. And the GBP dollar looking good. So you can see that the pound itself is super strong, which is part of the reason I quite like uh, pound yen as well. Also like it. So there we go. GBP pairs are really where I think this week's moves are going to be happening. They could, could there be something that uh, in the news that, you know, um, uh, BOE says, let's have a look here. So let's go and see. <sighs> Just look at the calendar. So Thursday, uh, so we had today, hold on. We had, ah, okay, I thought we had some other stuff. Anyway, so Thursday we've got annual budget release. Okay, so there's nothing. So I can't find anything that I think is gonna be a problem with that. So it looks nice and strong. Let's look at Aussie CAD pairs, let's look at that. Not so great. Not as strong as it should, but I will mention this. We've broken this downtrend. So this is not in a downtrend anymore. It's actually trying to turn around and go into an uptrend. This is a very small head and shoulders pattern there. Boom. Change in trend. So some traders, if you were high risk, you would you'd, uh, you'd buy on the break of this candle, of that number, and stop loss here, and target here. And it's what I find interesting is how all of them are going up, but that does happen. It'll tend to go up. Same thing here. Look at this. This has changed direction. So first of all, this is in its own way is actually a bit of a double bottom. It's a bounce and a bounce. It's got a lower low, but it has higher low here. So it's got bullish divergence. It has also come back to retest this. It's broken above this high. So it's a change in trend. That was your potential bullish kind of setup, which is done, which is here. 
Um, so that's going to go up, but it's very messy. It's very choppy. And there's so many other charts that we could trade instead of this. But Aussie Swissy looking bullish. Aussie Kiwi, very cool. This is interesting. I don't, I used to trade Aussie Kiwi in 2011, 2012, 2013. But in the last five years, it's just become very messy. It doesn't do anything. But this is the same thing. We really have a, a bounce here, a bit of a double bottom happening here. Big strong thing. This is also going to break the high here. It's also going to break this, it's broken that one. And then there's another one here that it's probably going to break soon, but it's probably also going to change trends. So I think Aussie Kiwi is going to turn around as well. Cad Swissy, same thing guys, look at this. Break into an uptrend, beautiful uh, retest, beautiful bullish engulfing candle. And if, if you haven't got in it now, you can put your entry above the high here because this looks a bit bearish, this looks a bit funny, but if it does break above that, you can put there and your stop loss there. And it should be a relatively decent run. So Cad Swissy also looking nice and bullish there. So Cad Swissy, Aussie Swissy, Kiwi Swissy, all of them looking good. Um, Kiwi Swissy, for example. Also, very choppy, but it is producing. Here was a double bottom. Here it's got a higher low, higher high, high low. So it's trending higher. It's not a very strong trend, but it is going higher. So not a fan of that one, but just acknowledging that. Kiwi Cad. Again, this is very messy. So this is garbage. So Euro GBP and Kiwi Cad are mostly garbage. Mostly. Okay, they're not great. This is looking more bullish than bearish. This is an inverse head and shoulders there. It's very messy. There's a break and a retest and a correction from whatever happened the other night. So this should go up, but it's just very messy. I would stay away from that one. Cool. Let's move on. How are we doing for time? We're good. 27. We've got 10 minutes. Let's look. We've got individual stocks as well. So let's quickly look at gold. So here's the other. So one hey, question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The blow in the chart. Euro GBP will continue to fall and drop off the weekly chart. GBP, yes. US dollar. No, uh, uh, sorry. Euro Euro GBP will continue oh, Euro GBP. to fall and Euro drop GBP. off the weekly chart. Let's, let's have a look. Good point. So let's have a look at the weekly. Yeah, you see that looks bearish. So the pound does look stronger than the week than the thing does look kind of bearish. However, uh, um, I, and I see what you mean. That is the, that is a setup for that. Um, I would wait and keep an eye on it. I think that's a good analysis. And I think this stuff is really good. I think we should try and get this out tomorrow if we can. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Uh, so let's go back to the Euro GBP weekly thing just to finish that. Um, I think there's a very good chance it's going to break out. But here's the thing with breakouts to the downside. We really need to, you have to let it prove that. We've had some strong support. That's my thing. Give me a second here. Oh, here it is. Um, so... We had some, that's a pretty decent reaction there. There's also a very decent reaction there. Slightly higher decent. This one's a little bit weaker. So that's a bit weaker. And one of the things that we'll show here if it's going to break through is you'll get a red candle that closes near the lows. That's usually a sign that in this situation, it's going to break through. Um, but until we get that, and this is very important, until we get that, we should wait and see. Because you could suddenly get a big green one that does this and then it's going to go that way. Um, so I would wait for it, but yes, right now you are right in that it is heading that way. It wants to try and break out to the downside and we'll have to see if that's going to be the case. Cool. Um, we went on to Euro, we went on to gold. This one, like this one is beautifully bullish. The weekly, look at this one. So that is a beautiful double bottom. That looks really nice and bullish. This is Euro Kiwi. It's breaking through that. Uh, and it's kind of breaking through that. So this is definitely going to go up. That's super bullish and almost, almost a bullish engulfing candle, except that zero QB is going up. I think we were on gold, weren't we? So on gold, the only thing with gold is we're overextended. So we need a pullback. So the pullback is either going to come down to here, one of these two areas. If you take, not convinced just yet, but if you take this, wherever it does pull back, you're going to need it to come back to a 50 or a 32. So it's probably going to be somewhere in the region of, could be something like that. So gold could go up here to 2000, 
125 or 130 there and come back into these areas. So I think I would wait for it to come back into that area there and take off. Let's go and have a look and see how it's doing at the moment. Any signs of failure? No, it's still very bullish. No signs of it turning around just yet. So I think it might still go up before it comes down. It's had a nice breakout. It's very nice and bullish. Looks really good. Looks really good there. Really good. This is a, a perfect break and a retest. Breakout, retest, and go. So actually, it's probably going to work its way up to 2200 before it takes a bit of a breather. So gold is not tradable uh, just yet because the big move has already happened. Silver is, is looking really good. That's taken off really good starting to look good look at this beautiful break of this downward slope here which it then broke with a beautiful double bottom here and it's going on it's on fire so silver has got 24 40 and all-time highs definitely 25 dollars in its future that looks amazing cool so that is that looks like a crude oil is also going to do well so basically all of these guys are benefiting from a weaker us dollar um Cool. Uh, I mean, look at crypto. Crypto's on fire at the moment. Is crypto in a bubble? Yes, it is. Crypto is absolutely in a bubble. Same thing that it is here. The difference is that it's not all retail now. There's some institutional money in this now, but this is on fire. I wouldn't, I'd be very cautious about trading it. Um, I think it's going to have, when it has a correction, it's going to have a big correction as well. So yeah, just be you say very cautious on it. It's 67K right now. Yeah. Dollars. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And Ethereum still got some room to go. So that's nice. So I prefer Ethereum, but yeah, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, it's great. It's not a bad thing, but Ethereum is much safer to trade. Look at that. Very steady. Go down to the four hour. That's beautiful. That is picture perfect. Looks incredible. We will get a correction from this. We'll see how that goes. Then I want, where's my crude oil? There we go. Oil. So crude oil is also breaking, trying to break out. Yeah. The problem I have is with this one, it's a potential for a fail breakout. So one, one candle goes up, the next candle goes down, and it's a fail breakout. So this is very important. Alternatively, if price closes where it is here, and tomorrow we get a bullish candle, then it's a breakout and a retest, and it's on its way. Does that make sense? So if tomorrow it's if tomorrow this is our level of support. If tomorrow price comes back down in here, then it's a fail breakout. On the other hand, should we get a green candle tomorrow that stays here? So it stays above the level. Then it's probably a break and a retest. So the trick will be watching the four hour, the one hour time frame, I guess. One hour time frame. What would I be looking to see here? I'll be looking to see price bounce, bounce, go up and break that trend line and produce high lows, high highs. That's what I'd be looking for. And once it breaks that or it breaks that, we're good. Okay. So that's what I'd be looking for on crude oil. Now let's go through some individuals. Let's look at the indices, global indices. Let's have a look at those. The Dow is losing momentum, guys. So very bullish less bullish less bullish it's running out of steam so what you want to do is you want to watch the 50 period moving average price is going to come down like this and do this and then probably this and do that once it drops under the 50 period moving average it's going to start shifting it's going to be bearish and that isn't because of a bear market we're going to be in a bull market for many years it is because we have a weekly market and a monthly that is running out of steam it needs to have a bit of a correction which would be perfect just to see a pullback into this area it would be amazing. Okay. Best way to make money on the indices is to ignore the media. Don't listen to the media at all. Purely follow the charts and you'll be fine. You just, the media is just absolutely bollocks. They don't know what they're talking about and they're just so bad at it. Cool. Then we have S&P 500 also looks very good. Uh, not actually looking as weak. So this looks like this is still good to go. It is starting to slow down, but I don't think we'll see a change anytime soon. Uh, NASDAQ. 
also looking very, very good. I think there's actually a fair chance that we will have rate hikes. Let me explain why. Part of the reason that all the corporations have been uh, reporting record earnings is actually because they have been squeezing people's savings. So they're, um, they do, they've just been milking it. So the problem is, is that actually people are eventually going to cut back on spending because the cost of living is just too high. And that is going to result in poor corporate earnings quarterly results, which is going to make the market seem like the markets are taking strain. So when you hear all these companies reporting losses and blah, 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 everyone's going to go, oh, no, the market's doing, not doing well. And actually, it's what it is, is it's a bubble bursting. Corporations are just charging too much and they're going to have to bring their pricing back down in line. And that's going to look like market weakness, but it's not. It's corporate greed that is being bought back into check. So I want you to be aware of that. Uh, if you don't believe me, just look at all the things that I'll talk about corporate greed and talk about um, record prices and then ask yourself why in three to six months time, suddenly they're having record losses. And when you have that, it's just a market bubble correcting. Um, and so that's going to happen. And that might result in a couple of these things. Uh, might result in maybe a bit of market fear. That might be something we get, but it's a good thing. It's a really, really good thing. And it's a very good thing from a, from a retracement perspective. So we'll have that to keep in mind. The FTSE 100, guys, is trying to break out. It is desperately trying. It's not even just this pattern here that's trying uh, to break me, out. Uh, one question they, they are making. Do you think Ethereum yeah. will ever reach the same price as Bitcoin? Uh, I think Ethereum will reach its old highs. It's going to lag because it's not as popular, but it's still going to, it's going to keep going up. It's going to keep going up is my answer. Um, yeah. Bitcoin is just the original and that's why everybody follows it. It's the granddaddy. Okay. So the FTSE to me looks very good for a potential breakout. Not yet, but it looks good. I think this was a particularly good candle that we got over here. We need to see this thing break out. So, okay. It's looking nice and bullish. It's going to break out. Just the question is when soon. Um, the DAX incredibly, very happy, very powerful, broken through all time highs. Really good. A little bit overextended, but not crazy. Not crazy. So I think this has still got some room to go. So my expectation actually is probably something like that before it comes back down to here. I don't think it's looking that bad. And a part of the reason we also know we're in a very strong bull market is because even when the US was having a correction, the UK and the EU markets didn't correct as much. They actually kind of kept climbing or they stayed where they were. So it was really, that's a really incredible sign of strength. We've got ASX looks very good. I saw something about the ASX today. That's just broken out. ASX is just broken out here. Just broken out there. It's basically going to do a bit of a retest. Go down here. Oh, look at this. There's a setup right there. Uh, might not look that obvious, but this is a buy setup immediately. There. That's a buy setup. It's an inside bullish candle. Double bottom. Okay. So, boom. That's a buy setup. How do you do this? You can enter right now. You can do that. You can enter. I would have got in here, but we're almost there anyway. Get in there, put a stop loss there. Looks really good. Uh, that's very nice. I like the look of that one. Um, that looks very good. So that is the the Aussie uh, 200. Then let's look at Spain. That's, is that right? Yeah, it looks good. That's fine. That's still looking more bullish than bearish. High lows, highs. That looks okay. Then we have a look at Hong Kong. Let's look at that. That's trying desperately to turn around. Again, what you want to watch here is this has been going down for a very long time. So here you want to be watching this. You want to be watching that. When you break through that and you get above the 50, then it's going to go off. Then it's going to take off. It's trying to turn around. It's trying. This is potentially a double bottom on a much higher time frame. That represents the potential double bottom. And therefore, you could see a turnaround. Now, you've got an inside bullish candle. What's a very long run now. The rest of the world's looking nice and bullish. I predict this is probably the end of the down run here, and it's going to turn around. But the confirmation of that will be when price goes from where it is now above and closes above the 50 period moving average. So what this is going to do, and it's going to take the whole year to do it, is it's going to do this. Uh, and so the buy opportunity here, the safest safest buy opportunity here is when 50 goes along like this, price goes like this, comes down and produces a bullish candle over here, entry there, stop loss there, and it will go. That'll be the best one. So that'll be the safest, most high probability buy setup. So let's quickly run through a few of these and we wrap this up. I want to go for five more minutes. I don't want to go much longer. Uh, Apple. Apple's 
uh, head and shoulders. So that was a head, a bit of a head and shoulders pattern that's happened here. Uh, and that's going to break down. I suspect Apple will come down to 167, 170, and then it'll assess if it wants to go back up and go higher. Um, Amgen, Amazon. Oof. It's like terrible. No, that looks fine. No problems there. Well, you know my weekly, you know my weekly analysis video, so you know all the stuff in there. So I actually all think that good. Disney's on its way. Disney was a really good setup. Disney's on its way. So Disney was one where I should have shouted from the rooftops when the buy opportunity happened, but it was all down here. It looked really good. Um, so Disney looks really good. Johnson & Johnson, let's have a look. Ugh. JP Morgan looks good from what I've seen. Look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is like a no-brainer in terms of easy trading stuff, money-making stuff. Pull back into the moving averages. Look at these little setups over here. We're waiting. I'd rather have a bit of a pullback now, but that's like a no-brainer. There's lots of little trading opportunities here. Man, it's funny. So if I was, if Forex didn't exist and I was just trading stocks, this would be the stuff I'd be looking at. Ridiculous. Okay. Uh, Meta. Meta's fine. I think it's going to have a bit of a deeper correction soon. Microsoft. Fine. Microsoft's okay. I think they're all fine. They're all due. When the indices have a bit of a correction, then we'll see what happens. Netflix looks fine. NVIDIA. Okay. NVIDIA is just on fire. I mean, it's just ridiculous. This is like Bitcoin. I think again, I think part of the reason we see these, this is a hypothesis. This is not a, I don't know this. This is a guess, but I, it's a reasonable guess. I think the reason we're seeing stuff like NVIDIA take off and Bitcoin take off and stuff is because we have more retail people in the markets now than 10 years ago. When I got started in 2008, 5% of the market was retail traders. Now we're probably 30%. So I think there's much more retail money in the markets now. And this type of behavior is, seems to be more like what we see. That's why I think retail is playing a bigger part in it. Tesla tank today. Tesla tank today. Okay, so what has Tesla done? Tesla has broken. It's done the opposite. It has broken. This is a bear flag. It's broken down. So what does that mean? It means right now the downtrend in Tesla is still very much intact. It looks to me, based off that, Tesla's going down again to the lowest. Certainly going down to there, it's probably going to go lower. So Tesla's downtrend is still intact. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it from me. So while I was doing it, I was kind of talking about the risk stuff. Uh, I was talking about the risk stuff, trader mindsets and risk management. So um, I spoke about strategy. I was looking for a lot of pullbacks, testing support, like a test of retest of resistance, retest of support, entry above a candle, stop loss below the low, targeting three to one. So even if you weren't aware of it, I was actually talking about strategy in that. Um, I gave directions for every single chart that I looked at. There were only two that I didn't think were really worthwhile getting into. It was like Kiwi something and Euro GBP. Um, I trade half a percent or less per trade. Uh, and I might take a whole lot of trades, so that's fine. I think there's some good stock trades to be made now. In fact, I think possibly uh, if you could trade stock charts on the daily, if you're just trading the daily, I think it's worth looking at those as well. And then risk, so trader mindset is risk management, meaning that when you risk less, it messes with your head less, which keeps you more objective, which keeps you less emotional, which stops you from spiraling. So funnily enough, how to get a healthy trader mindset ironically, is just to risk less per trade. Um, half a percent or less is really a good way to go. Start at a quarter of a percent. You might take 10 trades and you can still be up 6 to 10% in a month and you took 10 or 20 trades. And if you had one or two losses and it was half a percent, it's nothing. So what you're really preserving is your stability because the more stable you are, the more emotionally calm you are, the better your analysis and the more you enjoy this and and you're not and your decision making process is not made because you're under stress to recover losses to do all kinds of crazy things you're not angry you're not revenge trading you're not doing stupid stuff which is going to make your situation worse and all of that comes right back down to risking a small enough amount that there's definitely money if it goes your way but it's not going to upset your brain if it goes against you and that's like it's a magic recipe that's it so you're always going to think about protecting your future self so that is it from me. Usman, do you have any questions? Sure, no. I think you did a very really good review in general. So any yeah. questions? Yeah. <clears throat> Are there any questions? No. Okay. 
Um, all right. So I am um, based off that. I would say let's wrap this up. Let's, if you can, please ask your department to edit the two together. Give it to me. I want to promote this. I think it's really good, and I think the sooner we do it, the better. I think there's some really good stuff today. Okay. Thank you, Usman. Uh, he say we have answered all his questions, so he he been really. I mean, this, he said this had been excellent analysis. So I really appreciate. So I, I think the same, Adam, you did really well. You, you give a you. really good uh, global review. So yeah, so excellent, definitely good. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gents. So yeah, Hugo, you and I can have a chat later about if we're gonna do more of these and what we're gonna do. But if we could do one like this a month, for example, that could be amazing. We do it at the start of each month, which are the, you know, these are ideas, but we can talk about that later. Okay, great. So we are about to finish. Thanks, husband. So we have to plan the, the next one. Okay, so it's a good idea actually to to do like a quick review month by, by month, no? Yeah, it's a great idea like this. Okay. Cool. Okay. Thank you, you everyone for coming. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Have a good week. Have a good month.